here so it'll be an exciting night to see what they do it doesn't look like mo ahmed is is on the oh. the line right now so he forgive me for that one <laughs> he is probably scratched but eric avila is on the line there mm -hmm. running for golden coast mm -hmm. and adidas and then we've got two oregon track club athletes who like to mix it up at the front there uh it looks like three oregon track club athletes i think jake hayward may have jumped in there as well mm -hmm. uh but Will Paulson and Vince Ciotti, 335 and 336 men there, taking their PRs down last year in the Big Friendly Series. I know Eric Avila is going to be looking for a little bit of redemption tonight. He was uh, unfortunately had a little bit of a, a fall, a little bit of a scuffle at the last sound running meet, and so he's looking to get out clean and have a good race tonight. There were some grabby hands down there in a L.A. A lot of grabby hands. <laughs> we hope for a clean start here. All right, and they're off. Look at that mullet flying in the wind as Craig Engels gets off the line. It's feathered today. Probably blown out for the start here. I would assume that he has his hair all nice for a big race like this tonight with so much great competition. you got to be prepped. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple athletes jumping out front here. A couple rabbits, it looks like. A uh, Portland athlete jumping in there, getting the pace going. Mm -hmm. And an army man up front. Jake Hayward is in the field. You can see Hobbs Kessler, the high schooler, on the outside on Amos Bartelsmeyer's shoulder. So we have Josh Thompson sitting in fourth right now of the Bowerman Track Club. He's got enormous speed in this event, and it'll, I believe he's putting himself in position right now to be able to make some moves later in the race. Josh Thompson closes very well, and his PR actually comes from indoors, and that's 334 for this event. Craig Engel is also a 334 miler or 1500 runner. That's a 54 second first quarter. So the field is strung out. I think uh, 54 for the front is good because it means that the guys midway through the pack are running 55 to 60, 56, which is much better pacing for this type of event. Yeah, it, it really shows when you have the entire group pulling along, you're going to be able to see some fast times and everybody races each other's game. Now we got, you see Mason Fairlick back there in the Tracksmith jersey too, doubling back after his 8-18 victory. Yeah, definitely keep an eye on Craig Engels here. He's in perfect position as he's going through. Craig Engels looking to make a statement here. Famously closed in 26 seconds for his 335 flat victory in 2019. We'll see what he can do here. As they come through 800 meters here now. In about... 153 seconds. Wow. So the pace is hot. The pace is hot here in the forest. Jake Hayward on point. Josh Thompson behind him. And Charlie Grice moving in here. Mm -hmm. Charlie Grice, uh, he's got an axe to grind in here. And not happy that he's not mentioned in the, in the pre-race previews that other publications have been putting out. He wants to make a statement here. And he inches up into second place in that between Dan Green. That was definitely a strong move. Great move <laughs> heading into this penultimate stretch. 222 through a thousand meters here. Mm -hmm. Jake Hayward on the point. Now we see Eric Avila and Mason Fairlex starting to move up on the outside here as we come into the bell lap. Bell lap covered in what looks like 237 high. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what this 1200 time is. Jake Hayward still at front. Charlie Grice, Vince Ciotti in there too. 252, Henry Wynn on the outside, and Will Paulson moving up with that great hair right next to Henry Wynn. Mm -hmm. But look at Josh Thompson of the Red Lightning coming into third position, and Craig Engels protecting his spot on the inside, fighting for that rail. It'll be interesting to see if Craig Engels can jump out there. He seems to be a little bit boxed in right now as he's fighting with Josh Thompson. Will he be able to get and jump out there to be able to come around the outside? That's a battle right there. We know those two guys have had beef earlier in this season. So look at Craig Engels try to make a move, and he jumps in front of Thompson. And you got Henry Wynn on the outside. Who's it going to be? It's Engels and Grice. And Hayward on the inside. Engels looking to defend his title. Engels takes it. 333. Wow. That was a great move, being able to defend his position there and jump off. He was really boxed in with 200 meters to go and had to get a little bit physical there with Josh Thompson. 
27 second final 200, 333.64. That is a personal best for Craig Angles, the RV driving, beer can waving, mullet flashing, all American hero who jumps out. Look at this move here. Replay jumps to the outside in front of Thompson and swings wide. Mm -hmm. I think that can be the hardest thing about the 1500 meters sometimes if you don't have that position, it can be really difficult to make the moves and get the times that you want. But it seems like Craig Engels really was able to put himself in the place where he was able to run that fast time. Look at him see a friend here. And what did Hob Hobbs Kessler ran 334.36? Oh my God. <laughs> he obliterated Webb's record. Wow. I didn't even see that oh coming down the street. We, compl we completely missed that with everything else going on. That is a truly incredible time. He is 18 years old. Hobbs Kessler, Webb's record was 338.2. Hobbs Kessler Hobbs breaks Kessler. that by nearly four seconds. That is absolutely astonishing. Hobbs Kessler, you have some big things ahead of you. The high school record in the United States for 1,500 meters is now 334.3 by Hobbs Kessler. Etch his names into the history books with Jim Ryan and Alan Webb. He is right up there. And I think the amazing thing is Hobbs Kessler is able to get up there and compete with pros that have been doing this for a long time. I think he's been able to show that he not only is fast, but he has the tactical sense as well. 